Hey everybody, my name is Adam Hansen from Adam Hansen Art, currently in Monterey, California. And today's video, thanks for being here for the live replay. We're going to be talking about um, commission frequently asked questions. So I hope you enjoy the process. Again, my name is Adam Hansen from Adam Hansen Art. I am a fine artist who specializes in all things related to the railway and landscapes. And I'm also a rail, scenic rail tour guide or travel guide. So thanks. Hope you enjoy the video. Okay. Wow. We are officially live. We are here. I can't believe it. I would say this has probably been like probably three to six months of planning to get right here to be in this moment. So if you're joining me, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, for anyone who isn't able to watch the whole thing, I do realize that it's like the end of the lunch hour or you might not have a lot of time. Um, I'm definitely gonna record this. And if you get on our email list, which you can go to www.adamhansonart.com, I'll be able to send you guys the recording. So yeah, I was doing a lot of thinking and I wanted to pose this question to you guys. How would you characterize yourself? So I'll give you guys about uh, four categories and yeah, let's see where you fit. So the first type of person is methodical. They love detail. They love the background. They love the process. They love every single thing when they go to an event. They want to know how it happened, how it was built, how it came together. Second, would you say maybe that's not so important to you that you're competitive, that you want to be the best, you want to have the best, you want exclusivity, you want things that other people can't have. So when they come over, you can impress them or, you know, you can show yourself to be successful with your friends and family. Two, are you caring in the sense that you want deep meaning? So you don't care so much about status, but maybe you just really want to show people that you're thinking of them, that you're caring for them in small ways so that they always know that they're not alone. Or would you put yourself in the fourth category, which is spontaneous, where you're kind of a little impulsive, but you don't mind it and you just want to have fun. You want to see what the next adventure is, whether you have a plan or not. So I start with these four categories because before I really get into talking about the commission and the live Q&A today, I want you to position yourself in one of these four mindsets and frames. It's really going to help you understand what I do and how I can help you. And so that really is the heart of why I'm here is I want you to know what I have to offer you. How can I help you discover what you really want? A lot of people think art is just a pretty picture on the wall, uh, but the more I do it, the more I experience, I know I watch other people, I see it does something completely different. It can speak to people's unspoken needs. Unspoken needs, what are you talking about? For instance, I used to be in the military, and so every year when I would go home to my favorite national park, the Cuyahoga Valley National Park, I would religiously buy their calendar. And it wasn't until recently when I got out two years ago that I realized why. Every time I'd go back to my bunk, I would look at this calendar because it would give me visual escape. <laughs> the military is a very stressful place, as I'm sure many of you can imagine. And so being able to look at a nature scape or look at something that I'm really passionate about or that you're really passionate about can help calm your mind down so you can get back to doing your job and dealing with life. So, what is something else that we can do besides visualize escape? I mentioned others. Maybe you just want to impress visitors. Um, I don't really know many people that have original art in their walls. And so it's cool when you walk into someone's house, not just because there's a painting on the wall, but it's another way to express the host or the hostess. I mean, people are able to see what you value. People are able to see through symbols or even through the type and expression of the art, which becomes a reflection of you. And of course, every piece of art has a story. And so sharing stories can also be a big part of that. And so maybe the last thing you wanna do that is unseen is just stimulate conversation with people. 
I know for me, for a really long time, I was awkward when I would try to come around people and strike up a conversation. And so when I went to Stonewall Jackson's house in Lexington, Virginia, where I went to military school, he was a really awkward physics teacher. The famous general from the Civil War couldn't carry on a conversation. Pretty funny. So they said what he would do in his parlor is he would set objects in the corner or on tables or, you know, maybe even artwork on the wall so that he could point to something, take the awkward pressure off of him, and start carrying on a conversation about uh, one of his travels or his journeys or what was happening that day at school. So I think those things are pretty cool. So a lot of people ask, you know, hey, all that stuff sounds really cool, but it's really not that complicated for me. I just want to find something that matches my couch, or I just bought a new house, or I have a new apartment and I need a piece of artwork. Hey, that's totally cool. It can be that simple. But every time I go to Home Goods or even World Market, I see a very specific type of artwork. Maybe I go to Target. Maybe I'm trying to spend on the cheap and I go to Ross Dress for Less or something. But the style is set. They're mass-produced paintings. There's normally 50 to maybe a thousand of them. They're all the same. They're not unique. And they definitely don't cater to you. I mean, do you ever wish that you could put your favorite colors, custom order art, and then actually go through a review process with the artist so you know you're getting what you want? I mean, that exists. That's why I'm here talking to you today. So another cool thing, too, is people try to identify with artwork um, through honoring people, through life events. Maybe your grandfather worked on the railroad and you just thought the train was cool growing up and seeing him work on this big piece of equipment or machinery. Maybe that's a bygone era and you really have no connection to trains whatsoever. That's OK, too. But what's cool about custom art is that depending on the season of life you're in, we're always coming or going. We're going into a new life season. We're leaving an old chapter of our life. People are graduating. People are celebrating anniversaries. And so when people have purchased custom art from me, I always try to ask them, you know, like, what does it mean to you? Why is it special? And I think one of my favorite ones when I was in Balboa Park in San Diego last year, last March, uh, was a woman came in and um, she had bought a very specific piece of Tehachapi Loop. It had been a mini study that I'd done. And she said, I'm buying this for my husband. He loves trains. But I want to use this piece of artwork to simulate, to, you know, show and celebrate our wedding anniversary. And that was really touching that someone could see a piece of artwork and go, you know, these colors, this subject matter, whatever is going on, I see what my husband values and I want to respect him and I want to show him love. And so I'm going to purchase this so we can celebrate. At that time, she was saying they're like 44th wedding anniversary. I mean, that's special to be able to be a part of people's life moments. So who am I? And why do you even care what I have to say? I think that's fair. My name's Adam Hansen. I am a US Navy veteran. I was in for five years, but I've been painting and drawing since I was two. My mom likes to joke that I started off with her lipstick on the carpet. Uh, maybe not the most artistic medium, and my mother definitely didn't appreciate it, but you gotta start somewhere. So for years, my parents originally just like I would show interest in a toy train set. I think I got my first toy train set when I was like three. And then my parents just started to feed and nurture that. And somewhere along the way, art came in and I started drawing both and putting them together. And then when I joined the military, because I love to travel, I got the opportunity to visit over five different continents and ride railways on every single one of them. I really am passionate about specializing in railway paintings also as well as being a scenic rail excursion tour guide. I now actually work at the hand car tours just outside of Monterey, California as a tour guide. And I'm learning for the first time how to work on the railroad and how to 
fix the rails and how to operate heavy equipment and machinery. And it's fascinating. It informs my painting. And so on one level, I love painting and sharing and helping people discover how to make custom space for themselves and discover what they really want. And on the other hand, I'm really just trying to show people how to have a good time as a tour guide when it comes to trains. Uh, one of the things I've done in every major life moment looking back is I try to take my parents or my family on um, a scenic rail ride. So w when I lived locally, I grew up in Ohio. Um, I lived really close to the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. I mentioned their calendar earlier. Well, I would grow up my entire teenage years riding the Cuyahoga Valley Scenic Railroad. And so that inspires me. And that's something that definitely informs my painting. And it continues on every major step of the way I go. So, okay, you specialize in railways, Adam, and you like painting landscapes, and you also like recommending all these trains and stuff to people, but why? And that's a good question. When you're in the Navy and you're staring at the ocean for hours, and I'm not talking like uh, an hour a day, I'm talking like six to eight hours a day you spend a lot of time trying to figure out what's important in life. And that was one of the reasons why I joined the Navy. Originally, I didn't know what to do. I wanted to go to art school, and at the time, I didn't really think I could make it. Best advice anyone ever gave me hands down was don't stand still. So I joined the military, and it really helped me figure out what I want to do and what I'm passionate about. And that's painting trains and helping people discover it. But yeah, for artists, I'm sure, as anybody expects, it always goes a level deeper. You know, it's not just about making money. That's important. I need cash flow in my business. I need to be able to research and develop. I need to be able to create a runway so that I can keep creating great products and upgrading technology and be able to tell the world about what I do. That's part of the foundation about being an artist. But that's not my motivation. I realized while I was in the Navy that one of my jobs on being here on earth and art and trains is just a conduit to do that is to encourage, encourage other men to be good fathers, good sons, good husbands, good brothers, good uncles. I mean, you name it. And life really all boils down to relationships. Whether you have a relationship with creator God, whether you have a relationship with your spouse, with your kids, with your bros, with your sisters, whoever you want. Life is all about relationships. And artwork is really a conversation. I understand how deep and personal it is to commission a piece of artwork. And how when you do that, like you are really entrusting the artist to carry forth your vision. So that is one of the reasons why I only do five commissions a year right now. And I'll talk more about that later on. But the heart of the matter really is, I understand that artwork can bring people together. I mean, you see it all the time. Why are there buildings all around the world, massive buildings, with nothing but artwork in it? The Louvre, with the Mona Lisa, the Metropolitan Museum, the Glyptotech in Denmark. I mean, you name it. These massive museums all over the world to bring people together, to talk about the human condition, and to experience deep emotions that often most of us aren't even trained how to say or do. I think that's really cool. And I'm happy to be a part of that mission. So I hope you join me. Alrighty. So before I forget, and it's pretty important, I think, on Wednesday, I'm going to be launching my commission window. So like I said, I only do five commissions a year right now um, that don't have to necessarily be train related. And um, they are for private homes. I also work with commercial restaurants and businesses year round, but I open up this really fun specific commission window so people can order custom sizes and people can kind of start getting familiar with um, what they like in art and what they don't. So during this week, and I'll start with uh, Wednesday's video, I'm going to be talking about art history. I'm going to be talking about historical rail preservation. I'll be talking about my process. I'll be talking about interior design tips to how best place your artwork. I'll be having a lot of fun trying to share with you um, how I can help you create your vision 
and really create a special gift for yourself or for others to mark an important milestone in your life. So I know not everybody is a huge train rail fan, but that's largely who I cater to is people that really love trains. So if you like travel, if you're a millennial like me, <laughs> trying to bring it back, I am going to give away this free tourist trains guidebook. This is like a 25 to $30 value. So it's not going to cost somebody anything, but it will require everybody to watch all the videos I'm going to post between next Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, February 15th until the following Wednesday, February 22nd, where I'll announce who the winner is of this cool book. Why is this book cool? So it literally breaks down every region in America. I mean, it's legit. So right now I live in California. So let's go to California. California in this book is, here we go, region nine. So this covers all of America and Canada. And it talks about every major rail spot and interest that you'd go to travel. Learn about history, learn about trains, whatever you want. So this is just an example. So Region 9, which shows Nevada and California, has 43 different places. I mean, I wish I would have had something like this when I was growing up as a kid. I just would have went crazy. Growing up in Ohio, I really didn't discover half of the railroad stuff until I get older where I could drive and actually knew how to use the internet. But this is a book, one stop shop. Like I said, it covers all of the United States, contiguous United States, plus Alaska and Hawaii and Canada. And there are other books like this, but I just wanted to offer this for people that love trains and share this with you guys. Uh, the other thing that I should recommend to you guys too is if you're looking for how to display your art and it doesn't necessarily have to be train related, I created a free PDF on 10 tips to how to make your artwork look great. So if you go to www.adamhansonart.com, um, it'll be like the first thing that pops up or you can just go to the tab and Instagram. If you guys are watching from Instagram, hello. Um, and you guys will be able to just go to my icon, click the picture and then click the link to my website. And that'll take you guys to um, the 10 tips for the art guide. So you sign up for my email. Important thing to note about the giveaway too, is the replays are only gonna be available on my email list. I'll say that again, cause that's pretty important. So if you're interested, if you're interested in getting this tourist trains guide book by trains magazine, awesome. Like just came out in the last year, up to date, super cool. You have to join my email list because that's the only place I'm going to put all the replays. And you're going to have to watch all the replays by Wednesday so that you can answer my question. And the first person that can email me back each question pertaining to my five videos coming up this next week, that's when you're going to be able to see if you can answer them all. First person to answer wins the book for free. Send me your address. You get a cool book. All right. So. Now that we've gotten all of the important things out of the way, let's move into the details. So the Google form, if you're on my email list, or if you go to my website, you will see right at the top, it says the commission zone. I wanted it to be fun. So that's what it is. So right there in the commission zone, if you click that tab, the Google form actually that I have for anybody that's interested in original fine art, I have all the questions right there. And everything that I'm talking about today, I also have it right there. So if you don't appreciate video format, you just wanna read it, that's cool too. So let's dive into the questions. All right, so some common questions that I've had people ask me at art shows um, that I wanted to talk about. Is each piece original and unique? So the answer short is yes, of course it's original and unique. It's made by me, the artist, and this is actually one of my pieces right here that I recently did.
And I go outside. I'm a plein air painter, and I also work in my studio. And I try to find local or regional or even things from my imagination, and I paint them. And they're train-related or landscape-related. What's fun, though, is not just me being the only one that's creating the art, but it's also the materials that I use. So I'll dive more deep into it, but by trade, I am a watercolor artist. However, I've been able to find these really beautiful... Oh, let me get a drink real quick. These really beautiful paints that are made with semi-precious stones. I'm talking jade. I'm talking amethyst turquoise where they're literally ground and pulverized and then when they spread on the watercolor paper you see this beautiful granulation and uh, if I can I'll demo that later this week the other thing too is I incorporate different elements like wax and salt to really build texture into my watercolor paintings a lot of people when they see my paintings the first thing they say is that's watercolor and the answer is yes I don't necessarily paint super high key or with lots of water all the time. Sometimes I like more pigment because I like that buttery look that oil has. But if I want translucent, I simply add more water to get that dreamy mist effect. Something I think is really passionate, something that's super cool in, in watercolor is very unique to that medium alone. Alrighty, so then of course the authentication of the piece. Every piece is hand signed by me. Uh, I have a moniker that I created where I put my initials together. I was inspired by J.R.R. Tolkien, who is the author of Lord of the Rings. So if you actually look on the back of his books, you will see this weird looking rune symbol. And that's literally him artistically putting his initials together. So that's what I did. I don't have a traditional signature like most artists. I created my own unique moniker. And so that is actually the logo of my business and the back of each piece of artwork is hand stamped so it's authenticated by the artwork and I hand frame every piece. So yes, they very much are original and unique. All right, so more about these mineral infused watercolors. Like, okay, there's some precious stones, you're painting with some cool like so rocks and stuff, but like what else is there to know? Well, what I think is really cool is I'm a huge Indiana Jones fan. And so the company that I work with, they actually have 36 different rocks that they source from all over the world, Indiana Jones style. So people are riding mules or donkeys trying to find these ore deposits in the middle of who knows where. And then they're working with the locals for fair trade and to sustainably harvest these rocks. Then they're taking them all the way to Seattle, Washington, pulverizing them. Who, where the founder of the company is actually a chemist. I think that's so cool. And they're making super high quality watercolor pigments that are rivaling Europe and rivaling Asia. I love using these pigments all the time. And these rocks are brilliant. What makes them also unique is their light fastness. So again, it's rocks. You got to remember that. So watercolor paper is actually cotton rag. The paper, it's all about the paper. I use 100% cotton rag from Italy, from a company called Fabriano. I love working with them. What's fun about working with cotton is it is not flat. It has ridges in it. And so when you're painting with these pulverized rocks or even with when I mix traditional watercolors, what happens is that the rocks actually sit into these cotton eaves and then when light hits the paper and it refracts, that's how you get the luminosity in watercolor. And since these are rocks, they don't fade. They have indefinite light fastness. That's pretty cool. I can explain more of that later. So yeah, these paints are really special to me. And I'm really excited to continue pushing the bounds in the watercolor art world using these mineral paint paints um, that I found unique to my process as I paint machinery related equipment, such as trains, <laughs> and uh, mechanical details, architectural details, landscapes, you name it. So the next question is each piece acid free and archival quality. 
So earlier I had mentioned light fastness and I'll go more into depth about these things if you guys want me to during this commission week. I'm just trying to hit some wave tops here right now for people if they're curious or interested. So yes, light fastness is exactly what it says. It's basically if you were to put this painting in the light, how long is it going to have before it starts to fade in color? This is a concern of any person wanting to purchase original art anywhere, any age demographic, any social income, doesn't matter. This is like top notch importance. So the paints I use are 100 plus years indefinite light fastness. So indefinite is for the rocks. The 100, per, the 100 year plus is for the traditional watercolors. That's pretty cool. That means you can buy a piece of artwork for your grandchildren and after you've gone and they've grown up and they have their own grandchildren, they will still have this piece of artwork. As long as you keep it out of direct sunlight and you museum conditions or you just honestly take good care of the artwork, it's going to last multiple generations. Archival quality. So that's what that talks about. Is it acid free? Yes. I make sure to take the time to do research with all the products that I'm using to make sure that your custom art is acid free. So why is that important? Well, acid typically breaks things down. We want things to be more base. So that makes the, that makes them preserved. And so yes, to the foam core I use on the back with my frames and with the packaging on the front, as well as the paper and the sizing in the watercolor paper, all of it is acid free. Alrighty. Let's see. Oh, this is a great question. So maybe you guys didn't hear me mention this earlier, um, but if you get a commission from me, right, I'm talking about trains, I'm talking about landscapes, does it have to be train related? No, it does not have to be train related. If you want a still life, if you want a pet portrait, I can do those things for you. That's why I offer only five commissions a year because typically with each commission, and I'll talk more about this, how long it takes me, um, but I'm scheduling my year out. So when I'm actually physically working a commission, it takes a while. I'm drawing preliminary sketches. I'm working with you to make sure you like the preliminary sketches before I even start and bust out my paints. And then I'm normally painting your commission probably two to four times before you get the final because I'm trying to make sure the colors work. I'm trying to make sure I'm hitting all your intent. I want it to match your couch. I want it to be what you want. So yeah, the care and time that's put into each commission really matters. And I also, if you're asking me to paint a person, if you're asking me to do other things like that, I need to practice. I mean, just like any artist, they may not say it, but there are very few artists who are going to give you their first initial sketch. Every human being looks different. Every child, every still life, every animal, they all have nuances to them. Caveat to that, again, I specialize in railway paintings, mechanical details, architectural details. That is what I am normally painting. That's what necessarily I'm really good at because I'm always practicing that. So if you want the very best of the kind of quality that I provide, I recommend that you ask for a train. I recommend that you ask for a cool mechanical detail or a really fun landscape that reminds you of your childhood or reminds, of, reminds your father of the farm that he grew up with his grandpa. You know, these things do matter. So definitely think about these things when you're filling out the Google form. Okay, so the next question is very much like the first. How can I inquire to see if my project is a good fit for the artist? That's pretty simple. Like I said, if you go to www.adamhansonart.com and you go to the commission tab up in the top navigation bar, it's the longest one, you can't miss it. It'll give you the questionnaire. So all these questions I have are right underneath that. And then it's going to actually lead you through the questions of like, what do you want? And how do you want it? And how soon can I get it? And that helps me 
work with you so that we can get you the best product and I can manage my expectations and your expectations. That way you're not upset when I tell you, hey, it's gonna take three or four months. So if you want this to be a gift, this is why I'm having people do orders at the beginning mid of February, not November, because quality takes time. So yeah, fill out the Google form and definitely contact me when the Google form opens up this Wednesday at 9 a.m. And that Google form, that link is only gonna be open to the public for one week. Again, I'll say one week. So on Wednesday, I'm gonna launch. If you're on my email list and only on my email list, will you be emailed and notified when the link goes live? So right at 9 a.m. this Wednesday, Pacific Standard Time, depending on where you are in the world. And then it's going to run until the following Wednesday, February 22nd, and doors, commission doors will actually close at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And then you guys will have to wait until 2024. Okay, next question. How will I know if my commission request has been accepted and my spot secured for the current year? Okay, so this process can be a little involved, so I'll try to keep it brief. But essentially, you'll fill out the Google form, and the first five people that fill out the Google form, because I only take five commissions a year, I'm going to immediately <clears throat> give me like a day or two. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, but I'm going to immediately look at those Google Forms when I have a chance because I'm also a stay-at-home dad, so I'm taking care of two little kids that are under three years old, and I'm going to get back to you. I will provide you with um, a preliminary sketch to see if what I'm thinking is what you're thinking, so we're on the same page. I will give you a price quote, and then, I, and then we'll continue to have a conversation. If you want to do a Zoom or you want to do a phone call, then after you submit the Google form, I will present those options to you. If you want to just stick with uh, email, then I'll communicate completely through that. Please let me know what your preferences are. Alrighty. And then if at that point you decide, hey, I like what you've got, I like your style, and you can give me what I want in the time frame that I want it by, hey, let's do business. Let's, let's make a deal. So... <laughs> I will send you an invoice, and once you pay the invoice 50% down, then I will officially re-email out the list saying that a spot has been claimed. That way, everybody knows in the email list, hey, there's no more spots. So here's the caveat. If I run out of spots before I finish my launch on Wednesday, February 22nd, I'm still going to do lives. I'm still going to be trying to educate about what I do and to help you prepare for next year. Or maybe you'll just have a little more insight into what I do as an artist and I'll entertain you. So there you go. All right, so I've kind of alluded to this earlier, but people want to know how long does it take? So again, like I said, I'm like, for a commission, I know how special commissions are. I mean, you have so many other options. And so if you decide to choose me to be your artist, it's an honor. Thank you so much. And I want to respect your time, your resources, your financial investment into either your loved one or your own home. So I'm going to take the time to make sure I can give you high quality customer service. So right now, the average commission takes three to four months. So again, I am a stay at home dad. I am in a unique situation because I'm also a homemaker, right? I'm doing the laundry. I'm helping doing the cooking. I'm doing the dishes. I'm getting my kids ready for when they go to childcare a couple times a week, or I'm entertaining them all the time. So there is going to be time where life simply happens. You know, kids get sick. You got to take care of kids. My family is way, way more important than my business. But at the same time, I have gifts and talents and I know that I can help you and I can help other people. And so that's why my children go into childcare three times a week so I can make sure I can focus on you. It's a give and take. It's always a give and take. So yeah, the average commission takes about three to four months. So again, when you're on the Google form, I'll set a firm time and date with you when you can expect your commission. So I want to make sure that you are 
well represented that I can help guide you from A to Z and so you're not in the dark. And please, please let me know if you're lost or in the dark. I'm here to be your specialist. I'm here to be your art consultant and your guide. At any point in time, you can say, whoa, whoa, stop, back up the bus. I'm here for that. So a little bit more about why only five commissions a year. So I also work with commercial businesses. Think Airbnbs. If you can believe it, and I hope you're watching, that'd be super cool. But there are people who have Airbnbs and old boxcars and old cabooses. Like, I think that is so cool. I haven't done it yet, but I definitely want to work with people who are doing this and eventually stay in one. So artwork can be used for custom branding for businesses. I work on a commercial level as well. So I work with restaurants. Ever seen a restaurant in old historic train depot? I'm trying to work with them. Train museums. I'm currently in three train museums in the U.S. right now. Uh, the Virginia Museum of Transportation was selling my Christmas cards last December. I was featuring the famed Norfolk and Western Class A 1218 engine in a Christmas nostalgic setting for Christmas cards. And they're the ones that built the famous Streamline Passenger, the 611, that is doing excursions in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. So I think that's super cool. But I'm also working in California on the West Coast, complete opposite coast, where I am actually working with the largest model railroad museum in America. Where is it? The San Diego, the San Diego Model Railroad Museum in Balboa Park. And so I did a series, actually, a collection of train-inspired artworks based off of the models and the surrounding landscapes in Balboa Park so that they could have custom fine art postcards. But to be clear, I am a fine artist and I have a fine artist line. And then I'm also a wholesaler and I work commercially with uh, fine art consultant and art licensing. So these are two separate areas. So today we are talking about me being a fine artist and helping you with commissions. And if you're interested in the commercial and what I do, please email me. I've got separate guides and information to work with you personally. But again, those are two separate things that I have as avenues as an artist. Okay. So you're probably wondering, all right, Adam, we've talked about the details. We've talked about what it means to me. We've talked about what it means to you. But how much does it cost? And I think this is very important. I can't tell you how many times I've gone into an art gallery or even a store and I see, I'm looking at fine craft and I'm looking at fine art. And I have to awkwardly ask every time I'm interested in something, and I may be interested in 10 things, not by anything, but I may be interested in 10 things in the whole room. And it's kind of annoying to have to go back to the head person every single time and say, hey, yeah, I'm interested in this like handmade salad bowl. How much does that cost? Hey, I'm interested in this painting. How much does that cost? Hey, this beautiful Tiffany style lamp or this Art Nouveau style lamp, like how much does that cost? Again and again. So I like to be upfront about how much I cost. Currently, right now, and my prices will go up every year. So if you have a fine art investment this year, the value of all the artworks that anyone has ever purchased from me will rise in value and provenance and stature every year when I raise my prices. So right now, I'm currently $4.64, I'll say again, $4.64 a square inch. Now you may be asking, okay, that's interesting, a square inch. And for commissions, I do have size limitations. So a lot of times people want to show me a really cool picture of their favorite dog, and it's awesome. But when I'm working, I cannot work five by seven with little itty bitty brushes. I, I won't be able to capture the likeness of whatever you want. I mean, it's, it's honestly a limitation. This is not a photograph. If you want photorealism, I am not your guy. The way people describe my artwork is impressionistic. So I'm contemporary, right? I'm currently living. I'm a contemporary impressionist. Or I do representational art. So I see an object and I make it look the way that I feel or the colors that you want or the way that it can best represent the emotions that you want to represent 
when you have guests come in. I mean, I think that's what's inspiring to me about impressionism in the style that I do is leaving a lasting impression on yourself every day when you walk into your house or your home or your restaurant or your office, wherever it's at. And every time you come in, you're greeted by a custom piece that welcomes you in, in a safe environment, in a welcoming, jovial environment. And then when people leave, including yourself, it's like you're getting waved goodbye when you look at custom artwork to a painting. It's like, have a nice day, welcome home. You don't get that with a photograph. With a photograph, there's so much in focus, the eye tirelessly has to delete things in order to see what you wanted to focus. When you order custom and original art, you tell the artist, you tell me what you want the focus to be. And I naturally make everything else more impressionistic and fade out. And so the part of the painting that is most important to you, and I do work from photographs, but I hone in on what's important to you so that when you look at the painting, your eye's not exhausted. Your eye is presently, pleasantly relieved. So the other thing too, as we're nearing the end of our 45 minute time block, right? The size that you want to make your artwork, if you want to make it bigger, I reward that. So if you go bigger than 22 by 30 inches, because that's how big I get the cut sheets from Italy, 22 by 30 inches. If you want to go bigger than that, yes, it does cost me more to buy the bigger sheets of paper, but I want to reward you. And so I actually reduce my square inch price the bigger you go. So right now, the largest that I can go is I can paint original paintings 40 by 60 inches. If you want to do more custom and commercial work with reproductions, contact me separate. But this, this is about custom artwork. So I'm going to reward you if you go above, if you go bigger than 22 by 30 inches for your commission, right? Because... You're helping me with my business and I really appreciate your support. I'm going to give you a price break. If you go, if you go past, I would probably say 30 to 40 inches, closer to that 40 to 60 inch range, I'm going to reward you a third time or a second time in this case and give you another price break. So if you're interested in those bigger pieces, let me know. Let's talk. All right, so as we near the end here, I think the last question we have today, everybody always wants to know, <laughs> do you have any guarantees? And the answer is yes. Oh, okay, been talking a lot, guys. <laughs> I needed some water. So my guarantee and it was just trying to be an honest business owner, right? If you order a piece of custom artwork from me or you ship it to your loved one and it arrives damaged, we're gonna talk and work out the details about that, but I'm gonna replace it with a like or similar item at no cost to you and it will be sent. Times may vary, right? I have got a commission schedule I'm already doing. So I got to serve the next person that was immediate line that already paid the 50% down. But yes, you before I take on more commissions, you are going to be served and served well. I'm going to create a similar light piece and reship it to you. The other thing too, is I only do this with commissions. I hand wrap every commission. Again, I know the value of custom artwork, how when it hangs in someone's home, it can change the atmosphere. It will make you happy because it's something you worked for. There's a reason why it's called fine art. There's a reason why it's not cheap and it's not for everyone. But at the same time, just because not everyone can buy it, doesn't mean that not everyone can benefit from it. So when it hangs in your home, when it hangs in your office, it can, like I said, create an atmosphere of peace. It can bring joy. It can create the environment that you want to be in. So when you wake up, when you're going to work or when you're at work, it puts you in a good mood and it gives you confidence to carry out the day knowing, hey, I bought a cool piece of artwork and I like it. 
So, with that in mind, each piece of artwork is hand-wrapped. I hand-wrap it in cotton, and then I really like rustic kind of feel. I mean, I'm painting trains, and painting landscapes, kind of gritty sometimes, you know, industrial retro vibes. Um, I wrap it in burlap, tie it with jute, and then I hand stamp it. I made a custom wax seal of my moniker because I want it to feel when somebody gets a commission. And this is this is not for just any original paintings. This is very special. This is uh, I'm talking about that high level of customer service. I want it to feel like you're getting a package from the king himself. So if you guys have any questions, please DM me on Instagram. Uh, again, I just want to reiterate. I got a free giveaway for this Tourist Trains Guidebook. It has every region in America and Canada, and it breaks down every train place imaginable in the U.S. I mean, this is, this is a great gift for any train lover. I'm going to be giving that away if you guys watch all my videos throughout the upcoming week. And then on my email list, again, I'll send the replays. And so just before that last day, whoever can answer all of my five questions from the five videos, that's who I'll send it to for free. And if you're interested in um, like tips to just hang up your art, cool artwork or want to learn more about me, you can go to www.adamhansonart.com and be sure to get on my email list because that's where I'm going to push out all these videos. I'm going to push out all the commission info and you'll see me on Instagram. Awesome. You'll see me on Facebook Live. Anyways, so I will see everybody again on Wednesday at 11 a.m. So I'll say it again. I'll put it out in email too. But I will see you this Wednesday, February 15th at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we're going to dive a little bit deeper into this commission process. But at 9 a.m. is when I'm opening the Google form. And so between 9 and 11... Whoever wants a commission in between there to start, I'll start working with you directly. My name is Adam Hansen Art. Again, I specialize in railway and landscape paintings, and I am a scenic rail excursion tour guide. I'm here to serve you. Hope you have a great day.